Here we are again today at the DIY garage. We have our drive line issue on our 2007 LR3. Now with this particular vehicle, uh, we've had a lot of problems over the last month with drive line vibration. It's something that just happened when we were moving to our new location here in Indianapolis. And uh, with that, we figured it out. Uh, we've narrowed it down to a drive shaft problem. So we are here now at Indy's DIY Garage, and we're gonna this, with this series, we're going to go through and show you from start to finish how to remove and replace a drive shaft, and what actually failed. So I'll show you the part and the component that uh, kind of went. All right, today what we're going to do is we're gonna remove the old drive shaft that has failed. We are going to inspect what went south on this particular unit. We're going to replace it with our new component that was provided to us from Atlantic British. And uh, hopefully we'll get this pig back on the road and move on to the next project with Trilex Performance. All right, let's pull this pig out of here and see what we have. We run into some unique fasteners. Uh, this in particular is what's called an E-Torx. So it's an external Torx. It's a six point socket. Um, a lot of guys try to use a traditional 12 point socket. Um, they've tried to use wrenches. Certainly never ever use vice grips or channel locks. But what we have today is the E-Torx socket. That allows us to take these things off without causing too much damage. So we have removed this front universal joint from the transfer case, and we are now going to pull down the carrier bearing from the center. All right, to finish this off, what we've done is I've removed the front the universal CV joint from the drive shaft. I'm now going to take the rear seal or the rear joint off of the dry shaft. And the last thing that we will completely remove is the center universal, the carrier bearing. That allows these things not to fall on our head when I break this back collar loose. All right, we're gonna pull down the carrier bearing and out with it, we should be able to pull our dry shaft out and put it on the bench and make an inspection. What we have here is the old drive shaft that we have removed from the truck. And then we have the new drive shaft here that was provided to us by Atlantic British. Now I've laid them side by side to verify that they are the same as something that we always want to do because there could be slight variations and it's a lot easier to figure out that things don't work while it's on your bench rather than fighting underneath the car, busting your hands, hitting your head, sharpening your profanity skills. Uh, just take five minutes, guys. Lay stuff out on the bench when we replace parts and make sure that one is like the other. So this particular unit, we have had a unique failure. Uh, the failure has been traced to the center pivot point. It is a type of joint that allows for change in angle between the input and the output is a constant velocity type joint. It also allows lateral expansion, so it allows the drive shaft to go fore and aft to account for torque and chassis movement. We have the same unit here on the replacement. So with our problem in the drive line, as I mentioned earlier, man, it sounded like somebody was beating the hell out of the truck with a hammer, shook like crazy. I mean, I went to Hardee's, I had a little tater tots in the cup holder, and those little things were jumping all over the place and shaking to beat hell. I honestly thought a rim was loose, but the more I paid attention to it, you could really feel the vibration in the tunnel. So that got me wondering, what the hell is going on? So we've done the typical things on a test drive. Uh, when you, whenever you have a vibration, you want to 
f figure out if the vibration is related to road speed, if it's related to gear that the vehicle is in, uh, two or four wheel drive. So during a test drive, we isolated the concern and we found out that we could get the vehicle to where it was making the noise and the vibration, we could shift it into neutral. And as long as the, for those moments where the road speed stayed constant, everything as far as the vibration is concerned stayed and occurred. As soon as the road speed dropped below the frequency threshold, the vibration went away. What we found out here is there is slop in the center joint. All right, and that slop is what causes this whole thing to kind of get out of motion. All right, here we have the new drive shaft. So you'll notice I can rotate this and we have no slop in this joint whatsoever. So we certainly have found the root cause of our issue in the failed drive shaft, mainly specifically in this center CV joint that allows flexion and expansion contraction of the drive shaft halves. So we, we have removed the old drive shaft and now we're going to reinstall the replacement drive shaft. Now for this, we have a brand new part, all shiny and new. And the first thing that we're going to do is connect the center carrier bearing and the rear yoke. Now with the center carrier bearing and the rear yoke, the reason I'm doing it this way is because the rear yoke on most drive shafts has a detent, okay? So when I connect that, it allows the drive shaft to seat into its place, and then I can compress the shaft and get him up into the truck. Now, with this, there are some tolerances at play, so we want this to fit tight, and it is always going to. So there, we have installed the rear yoke of the drive shaft. At least we have it setting in its perch. We now have the front CV joint of the drive shaft in its place. And before I attempt to attach either end, I'm going to put this carrier bearing in because nothing spells bad day and crappy mood then a heavy piece of metal flopping down out of the underside of the car and whacking you in the head. All right, so we're going to finger tighten and start the bolts on the front yoke of the drive shaft. I'm starting with the front because in this particular application it is the easiest to get to. Now we need to line up our holes and then get our bolts started. Now we always want to start fasteners by hand, especially threaded assemblies, because the last thing that we want is to use a power tool and get these started crooked, and then we can have a cross-threaded joint. Okay, so we have the front bolt of the yoke started by hand. We're now going to leave these loose, so, and we're going to start on the rear of the drive shaft. The reason I'm not going to tighten these front bolts or the rear until all the bolts are started is with a drive shaft, we need to make sure that everything is in perfect alignment. And by leaving the bolts loose as I get everything lined up and started, that will allow everything to settle and center itself. And then we'll go back through and we'll torque down to factory specifications. All right, we are now going to finish tightening up the rear of the drive shaft. So where the rear yoke attaches to the input pinion of the drive shaft. So we're going to hand tighten our bolts and get everything started. All right, so before we tighten up the front and the rear yokes, I want to get the center carrier bearing set. And what that does is ensure everything is hanging evenly on either side. So we're gonna go ahead, there are two bolts for this carrier bearing in this application. So we're going to go ahead and get those in.
And now we can tighten the front yoke and then we'll move to tighten the rear. Now we don't want to tighten all these at once. We want to work our way around gently. So you never want to just tighten one bolt, especially of any round assembly, and then move to the next one. We want to snug it, rotate it, and once all of the bolts are kind of snugged, just barely hand tight, then we'll go back through for the final tightening sequence. All right, the front is snug. Now we're going to snug the rear of the drive shaft. All right, we're gonna draw down these, these rear drive shaft fasteners on the yoke. Again, we don't want to tighten these. We only want to get them drawn down snug. And then we're gonna go back through and make sure everything is tightened properly. All right, so we finished the drive shaft repair on our LR3. We're going to bring this thing to the ground, double check a few things, and then we should be golden. We'll go on our test drive and verify the repair.